Hi guys. Um, again, thank you all for being here. My name is Eric Cristodalados. This is Irene Janikakis, Brett Simon, and uh, Jacob Stone. So we're going to pick up where the other groups left off. And we've heard a little bit about what Acre is and what it does. And we've heard about potential partnerships with the state and potential partnerships with the university. So now we're going to turn to um, how knowledge from and partnerships with the private sector can augment the other group's recommendations and play a critical role in um, making uh, Acre the center of clean tech culture in, in New York City. So just want to remind you of our three, uh, th the three goals of our capstone. First is the long-term financial security. Um, the other groups talked about it also. We're asking how can uh, the private sector uh, play a role in uh, Acres financial security. Uh, the second is we want to establish a, a strong entrepreneurial culture in New York City. How are we going to develop the uh, physical and human infrastructure um, to, to keep that going? And, and, and what's the role of the private sector in that? Will Acre need to look different? And third and, and most importantly, we want Acre to be the center of a clean tech entrepreneurial revolution in New York City. So just a little bit about um, how we went about this. Uh, we, uh, we, we read a lot, um, but also, uh, also we uh, uh, conducted, um, had the privilege of conducting interviews with uh, business leaders, with um, incubators, with, uh, with other incubators um, around the country, um, including uh, uh, Austin, San Diego, and Boston, and, um, and with the Acre tenants themselves. So we want to thank the, the people who we've spoken to for uh, coming out here and uh, for actually taking the time to uh, speak with us. So thank you. Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about uh, corporations and uh, sustainability. Anybody familiar with uh, this advertisement? Anybody know, anybody seen it around the city? Really? <laughs> so, I'm sorry? No? <laughs> Times Square. Yeah, it's a Times Square. It's a Times Square. I loved it. Um, I actually really, no, I'm, I'm serious. I really went and bought a Coke when I saw it. Um, <laughs> so, um, but, but when we see these things, though, we, we're really suspicious. We're, we ask ourselves, are, are they being serious or are they trying to fool us? And are they sincere about, are these corporations sincere about uh, sustainability? Well, let's take one example. Unilever is a, a company that owns brands in food, um, home care, and hygiene. And they envision a future of uh, r restrained resources. So they're taking that future, that, that, that vision, and employing it in their corporate strategy. And they're coming up with cleaner products and cleaner technology. So we see that there can be um, corporations and sustainability together. It's not, it's not an oxymoron. And what we would like is for Acre to take advantage of this new style of thinking, uh, this, this new, uh, these new corporate values and, and new corporate investments. Thanks, Eric. So sure. from some of the facts and figures that Eric just shared with us, we can see that interest in and investment for a clean tech incubator like Acre is out there. And in order to harness some of this climate of corporate sustainability, we propose that Acre adopt a partnership tier structure like this one. Um, and ultimately, this is a tier structure in which uh, we structure how corporate sponsors buy in and participate in Acre's uh, in Acre. So at the kilowatt level, as you see, members have the opportunity opportunity to sponsor corporate events, um, uh, sponsor uh, networking events and panel discussions. And as you work your way up, Sponsors receive enhanced branding services. At the gigawatt level, members have the opportunity to interact with Acres Director of Operations and the Technical Advisory Board in uh, screening new uh, applicant startups. And at the terawatt level, which is the highest level, uh, members have the opportunity to uh, to serve a two-year commitment as clean tech community ambassadors and to have executive membership on uh, Acre's strategic uh, leadership team. So this is the on-paper value proposition to corporate sponsors, but essentially what we're offering them is an opportunity to have a stake in Acre's continued success and development, uh, to have to demonstrate their commitment to sustainability, and ultimately um, to engage further in New York's clean tech cluster. And we've already seen New York City corporations show interest in partnerships like these. Um, for example, Urban Green is a chapter of 
the U.S. Green Building Council here in New York City, and they've made successful use of a similar tier structure program. And also, uh, Clean Tech San Diego is an example of an, uh, of an incubator who has also made effective use of a similar tier structure, and they've been able to leverage the expertise of their corporate partners as a resource for their startups. So ultimately what, what we want to do is have as many corporate sponsors in as many industries as possible so that we're bringing resources in um, from many different areas for our startups. And so these are a few examples of corporations who we believe Acre should uh, pursue partnerships with. And really the crucial point here is that all of these corporations have an enlightened self-interest. In other words, they all stand to benefit from Acre's continued success. And a great example of this is Related Management, which is a real estate management group here in New York City. Um, they're interested in being one of the first users of new technologies and we actually spoke to Charlotte Matthews who is their director of sustainability and she explained that Related is interested in working with groups like Acre because they transform the landscape of New York City's approach to sustainability and ultimately a greener New York City is a better environment for groups like Related who want to be green. So how is it that we're going to accomplish all these new partnerships? And the key here is building out Acre's network. So the first way that we propose that Acre builds uh, networking with many of these different entities is through increasing their calendar of events, including um, luncheons, panel discussions, lectures, that all will increase dialogue and networking between investors and startups. And the second piece of developing this network is creating a clean tech contacts database for the clean tech economy here in New York City. So ultimately this will create transparency for who's involved in clean tech here and uh, it'll list everything from entrepreneurs to venture capitalists to uh, people at different corporations who are interested in clean tech. And the final piece here is increasing Acre's use of social media platforms. And having an on increased online presence will ultimately make it more visible, make the exciting things that are happening at Acre more visible to uh, the community at large and even to consumers. And the final piece in creating Acre 2.0 is thinking about who the startups are that compose, that, that are tenants at Acre. So the idea here is that we want diverse and quality startups that will ultimately make a, uh, the clean tech cluster here in New York more robust, but also attract more diverse uh, corporate sponsors. And when we spoke to, as on the previous slide, you saw that I had Siemens on there, and we spoke to Michael Kriklinski, who's a vice president of corporate strategy and development at Siemens, and he explained that Siemens is interested in startups that have robust business technologies and he, when he came to visit Acre, one startup that interested him in particular was Solega. And Solega has developed um, an innovative uh, simple solution to, uh, to installing solar arrays. And so it's groups like Solega, um, tenants li uh, portfolio companies like Solega that are ultimately going to attract new corporate investors. And finally, over here we have Think Eco, um, which uh, I believe Sonu mentioned before has developed the Modlet, which is a device that tracks and controls energy use from a particular outlet. And the Modlet is a, an example of a technology that has real demand here in New York City, and it's garnered interest from everyone from Con Edison to Martha Stewart. And you can see Martha has featured it on her show. So building out these startups ultimately, as I mentioned before, creates a more robust clean tech cluster here in New York City. And essentially with these sorts of, uh, with these sorts of startups, we're going to be able to attract new investors. And investors, will inv investors and venture capitalists will be as excited about clean tech as they already are about other uh, technologies like mobile apps. Gotcha. There you go. Um, so, um, well, what does this look like in terms of uh, revenues in, in the future? So we, we've um, mapped out our uh, plan for our, our tier structure, which Irene was uh, um, just discussing, and we, we've done it through to 2015. So ho uh, hopefully by, by next year, we've set a goal uh, for the end of 2012 to have uh, 17 portfolio companies and 175 of... Uh, excuse me, 17 um, corporate sponsors um, providing $175,000. Uh, and by the end of 2015, to have 65 uh, uh, corporate sponsors in this network and have um, $950,000. So I see, I see Micah's mouth is watering back there um, <laughs> because these numbers are a little bit optimistic. But even if we, even, even if we have um, half of these numbers, we still get nine portfolio, um, 
excuse me, we're still getting nine sponsors by the end of 2012, providing $95,000. And by the end of 2015, we get uh, 32 sponsors, providing a still significant $450,000. So um, we, like, we still like these numbers. So we just want to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, the challenges we faced. And our primary challenge was trying to envision what, uh, what these partnerships between Acre and, and, and the private sector are actually going to look like. And um, in, in addition to the partnership tier structure, uh, we, did we did think about a few other things, like uh, Acre possibly taking equity in some of their startups. And uh, we've, we spoke to some people like uh, David Huckman and, um, and some tenant companies and just really found that there was really no enthusiasm about that idea. So that, that idea went away. And we thought about, um, just, just like the group before was talking about um, foundations, we thought about maybe looking at the corporate foundations because uh, many corporations have charitable arms and, and give to, um, to charities and, uh, and some of them have been giving to sustainable causes. But still, we, we haven't found um, anything that would, would really invigorate the funding structure of, of Acre. So we're, we're sticking with the partnership tier structure. And, and we've spoken to um, the managing director of, of Greentown Labs in, in Boston. It's a, a small incubator. And we asked, because they have a, a similar structure, and we asked, what are you guys doing to, to get these companies um, uh, th these companies to sponsor you, and he said, well, actually, we're not really doing anything. Um, they're coming to us. So that's awesome, and that's exactly what we want here in, in New York City. But how do we do that? Well, hopefully we can do it by implementing some of the, uh, the networking ideas that uh, Irene was talking about before. And another challenge that, we're, that we foresee in the future is how are we going to sustain these long-term uh, partnerships? Well, that's the key. And, and, and we have to. Uh, otherwise, uh, our, our network is going to fall apart, and, and that's, that's ex exactly what we don't want. So you've heard for the past half hour um, from our group about all the different recommendations that, that, um, that we think will make Acre uh, a better place and, and exist in the long term. And it's time to make those recommendations a reality. So together, we're trying to make a network. A network that will make New York City a greener and greater city, a network that will be sparked by this entrepreneurial spirit that we, that we so want. And at the center, we're going to have Acre. Acre is going to be the facilitator in bringing all the, the government and the corporations and all of us and our moms <laughs> <laughs> and um, br bringing them all together. So, what we see here is, is little dots. And all these dots represent um, potential people in our and companies and, and all these things we talked about in our network. And the more dots we have, the more successful we're going to be. So we want more dots. <laughs> Yes. I actually uh, see a connection among the three groups in, in line with that last point that I wondered if, if I could test against you. Uh, one reason corporations often sponsor things which you didn't really touch on in your slide is beyond the image benefits of being associated with clean tech is they want access to students. They want access to students who've been trained in the latest and the greatest. So if you you know if the edu if the university group succeeds at its recommendation that more NYU students be brought in as interns, the government group succeeds at its recommendation that some money be raised maybe to turn that into a formal educational program so the interns are not just wage slaves. Now you got something you know now you got something potentially you can offer corporate sponsors that goes beyond putting a logo on the wall. You've got early access to. NYU students have gone through the program, maybe maybe even picked up some formal credit, co-op credit, and I don't want to put the burden unfairly on your group because it involves really all three, but if anybody wants to, to react to that, I'd, I'd be interested in your thoughts on that as a, a connecting thread. That's definitely a, a wonderful idea, and um, our ideal goal is to mesh the three groups because Acre clearly can't be sustained from any one direction. So the three together will have to work in tandem. And maneuvering students for eventual corporate uh, paths would actually be an excellent method of that. 
and could be actually something we could think about for the partnership uh, tier structure to uh, add in. Um, just I could comment that you said at the beginning that I want to push you a little bit more on what you mean by sustainability because when I'm a little skeptical when you say that um, corporations and sustainability are not an oxymoron because Coke wanted to make you buy a Coke by putting up a sign about green. Coke, for example, would not volunteer to use to uh, you know put out bottles that have to be collected again like we used to do if they had to pay the price for it, right? Because cans are cheaper and even and we know that cans get downscaled as well when they get recycled. But anyway, so I mean, you know, they get a tax write-off, they get good advertising, um, and so there's benefits and that's fine, but for but the thing is that I, I guess, I mean, all this comes back to, I'm asking you mean by sustainability, because ultimately these, any of these companies that you want to partner with are producing for exchange. They're not producing based on what, what it is that we need. And so even if their impact per product is lower because Unilever is moving towards wind power, ultimately they're going to need more markets, they're going to produce more. So in the end, we might get a net result that we're not actually helping the environment that much. So, I mean, that's a big kind of quick critical question, but I just sort of, you know, want to get ideas. Well, I think that with our goal of trying to finance acres um, for the long term, we're really trying to look at what is the value proposition of clean tech and an incubator to these companies. And like, like it or not, however however much happens in the end, well, we're, we know that these corporations are looking at it from a uh, standpoint of PR, but also how can they make cost savings with technology. And what we're hoping is that we can try to move through that avenue to where a critical mass can be reached at some point later on in time. And through this corporate funding, it just garners more and more attention and capital flow so that these entrepreneurs that are coming in are doing things that kind of break beyond that. And so that it isn't just with the, you know, that the net, the net impact can be much broader. And that might not be something that happens immediately, but we can foresee that it happens in time. Yes. I know that this actually might be going back a couple steps, and I don't think that's okay. Um, when I think your colleagues were talking about um, the other the case studies that you guys looked at, at other universities around the country that have similar kinds of programs, and, and um, they said that they're very in, in most cases there was not either not at all or not very much financial help coming from the host institution. Do you know, was there some help coming to cover operating costs? Because I would, from my experience working with a similar center like this, um, you really needed some money from the host institution to make sure that people get paid so that you can actually go after these kinds of projects. And I'm wondering, did you incorporate anything like, you know, a $100,000 that has to come from NYU just to keep the doors open? Yeah, Austin. Well, with our numbers specifically, we didn't look at it quite at that perspective. Um, and But really, when we investigated different incubators at different universities, we saw like a, a really wide range. For example, the Clean Energy Incubator in Austin, a lot of their funding does come from University of Texas and also from the local util utility, but that's about all of their funding. Whereas in other places like Clean Tech San Diego, that's basically all corporate funding. So it really does vary a lot. Um, and as the university group mentioned, um, there's going to be some variation in what we can really expect from the university, and that's basically going to be limited to no funding. So it seems like here in New York, we're going to be looking at um, more of that sort of uh, baseline funding coming from corporations and uh, the government. If yeah. Would you guys agree with that? So. <laughs> sure. Well, if you're looking at value proposition, I think the two tie-ins of Link it to the university. I assume there could be a strong link or not a strong link in five years, right? It's part of why. You're yes, that's something we evaluated whether Acre should stay with NYU Poly or not. Right. Exactly. And uh, to my neighbor's point here, um, you know, kind of, have you talked to the, the corporation in terms of what they're really looking into? It. I mean, the outsider's perspective would be access to sharp students, access to the actual ventures for potential follow-on funding, investing in these the incubated companies, um, and perhaps just being able to work with these companies and you know have like Siemens has have would have a positive 
would put a positive impression on the incubated companies and they might want to work in partner in the future. We did. I think those, I, mean, I don't think they're doing this for advertising and for, for the greenwashing effect. They can do that in Times Square without Inca, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you really need the university tied in, otherwise you're not going to get that flow of students through Acre. And so this, those are the two things I, I would say you would want to push. Assuming that you would graduate to being the negotiating committee with the corporations. <laughs> I mean, we did speak to some corporate sponsors who said they really want to look at Acre for quality startups, and that's the thing that would attract the most. Additionally, beside the other benefits that Acre can offer for um, networking, new ideas, and um, business capital that it could um, that it could garner. Anything to add to that? Um, I know we're running out of time. Um, <laughs> really quickly, though, um, we did talk to someone from Siemens. They said they would be really interested in sitting on a board for mentorship of the startups um, to really try to get their concept down, see what they can be doing to increase revenue, just a general kind of workshopping, and that they would be really interested in taking on some technology if they found that it was really high impact and something that would work well within their system. Thank you.